oh, where you watch? Look where you watch. No, where you watch. Choose the right thing to watch. And this enough to watch. Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan, Facebook and YouTube. And that enough to watch. The movie star flight take off from Pelper Time TV. So that. Boom. A big sound of a big tune. Ja all is Emmanuel I woe Ja Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon Well, Gideon go bustin' out the mat Again, so much oppression Poor people face right now Them crying out for freedom Them crying out for free speech Then, said them want to stand up Like them black liberators Like Malcolm X and Martin Luther And the ancient monarchy Where come pay of the way, sir Free up black people from me Tear down them fence, yeah Gideon, I'm a Gideon The Gideon, I'm a Gideon the Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well The Gideon go bustin' out the mat I listen, I see, I, the power of the Trinity Give us the teaching of His Majesty And we know war, not every... Blue, Mr. Gargan, blue Blue till me dance up me toe This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan. Good, healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe, and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at that. I make it look like um, a simple thing, a business as usual. But in a business as usual, a peer planting people. This guy I try to just steer and do anything necessary if you get the, the, uh, the third term, you know. Deliver me from my enemy, my God. Set me an eye from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. Save me from the bloodthirsty men. For the only lion wait for my soul. The mighty gather themselves together against me. Not for my disobedience. Not for my sin, Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Rise up, behold, and help me. You, Lord God of armor, the God of Israel, rose yourself to punish the nation. Show no mercy to the wicked. Traitor, sealer. They return at evening, holy like dogs, and prowl around the city. Behold, they spot with their mouth, so they're in their lips, for they say, Who art us? But you, Lord, laugh at them, you scoff of all the nation. O oh, my strength, I wish for you, for God is my eye tower. My God will go before me with his loving kindness. God will let me look at my enemy in triumph. Don't kill them, or my people may forget. Scatter them by their power, and bring them down, Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them be catching their pride. For the causes and lies which they utter, consume them in wrath, consume them, and they will be no more. Let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Selah. At evening, let them return, let them owl like a dog, and go around the city. They shall wander up and down for food, and wait all night, if they ain't satisfied. But I will sing of your strength, yes, I will sing a load of your loving kindness in the morning. For you have been my eye tower, a refuge in the day of my distress. To you, my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my eye tower, the God of my mercy, Sila. Now them a flip now. Now them a flip back, my people. Flipping back to say, oh, them have to put it on all and all of these kind of something with people. I say, no man, you never see them a kind of sitting here. This is a really daytime drama. Them are really days of our life and as the world turn. Prime Minister flip. Speaker flip. Water Minister flip. <laughs> The transport minister flip. Oh, Paje. The spokesperson we didn't have him a flip. Lord of mercy. Big up yourself. Coco. Up and running. Any other people. Up and running. Up and gunning. Sticky Stucky Sweet TV. Keith Gargan. Cassava Passava. Mind over matter, up and running. Well, right about right, you know, when I do really, as I say before, over and over and over again, he's a wall borer, and he's a man where drill wall in a things. So, you know, I do a little research, and there's something coming to my mind the other day. 
with the government, well, not we do, we're not talking about the government, we are talking about two particular persons who are around the country. The Prime Minister and his wife, Juliet, right? What we can see now, because we do carefully research, you know, and match the links to them. I say, okay, and this is going on. Because the man is so cleverly. Well, I don't call him a man, you know. That guy is so cleverly. What do you call it? Um, execute things. And him do it so neatly. If you don't know where, something you just say, no, I say go, I the the real thing, man. Nothing wrong with that. But people who want to dig deeper, you know, you have to dig deeper. And I'm going to dig deeper now. I can't just see the, the, the facts right before my eyes. I know so this man is one of the biggest tree card man, con man, and scammer. Yeah. Pee man, the man. It's like, why I tell you, you know, these blood clad people. There's very, as some people, as some, some, some Jamaica people check, say, well, then, you know, them, them, you know, if you got them one and then, you know, and uh, them now look on the real thing, you know, but they make them some little idiot. I take them for idiot. <laughs> yeah, I'm tell you something, you know. That's why you say me personally, you know, if you have man like we, and things, we don't know how to go. But, you know, this one that cleverly execute the whole thing with him wife. And, you know, I make it look like um, a simple thing, a business as usual. But in a business as usual, a peer planting people. Yeah. Peer plan, plan, plan things. Executed plan things with this guy. Yeah. Because he's one of the biggest con artists, biggest street yard man, biggest liar. And, you know, what you say, biggest scammer? You can't call it anything, biggest thief, big, biggest scammer. Because him can he no matter where he come, you see how long this man don't declare him tax. And him tell people come and say, well then you have to pay your tax. He might tell poor drum you can't people pay them tax, you know. But him can't declare tax. So you say what you call that? No scam and teeth in a one? Alright, we don't need that. But you want me to go draw up and write, you know, with this brother here. So, so, so clever, him and him wife. Because you see, this is a planting all along, you know. Cause this guy I try to just stay and do anything necessary if you get the, 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 uh, the territory, you know. It's like a, somebody I carry feelings who will happen with the PMP because GLP never do that. And need them come out and talk about our third term because they want to go along with PJ Patterson, stand where him take and, and the people them vote for him and for, for three term, 18 years, yet over 18 years. So they want the same thing now and they come and they do anything because they shouldn't even win the first election. That's number one. I just show um, PMP divided. So we can come back from that again. PMP well divided. And I'm going to go on and with them to cock up. But talk about um, Unite and, and split up the party. Uh, Andrew Wallace, see a loophole and just boom, call the election. Boom, right at the um, COVID. When you know supposed to happen. And I know constitution and nothing at all. But him do it and get away with it. Through the help of the PMP. No doubt about that. So people can go and chat and blah, blah. So that's why you see me come out and you see beat my goal and nothing like that. Because I'm never doing nothing. And even now, because what happened other day again, what me say, him come out and I talk about the speaker job. And it's a conflict of interest. So you never know that before. Because I was agree with it. Now I see the video. I come out and I me, me praise him and I say, well then, yeah. He might go to them now. But, it, but we have to spin back and rewind things and say, well, hold on there. But I just see this when woman um, appointed the House of Speaker, Philip Paul will jump up and, and second it. He might the first one. Then Julian Roberts will give it a blessing. The, uh, Mark Wallen give it a blessing. So when the, when, when the Prime Minister come out and I say no. So them all support it. And it's true. So they might flip flop. Yeah, man. So that's why I'm saying you should beat my goal and I rate you lately because I don't know what I'm going But, all right. Anyway, and that we come to talk about. Just drop in that because I just saw. We are talking about now this Carnivian Can Man. Yeah? This Carnivian Can Guide. We call himself Andrew Wellness. I know how you get that Wellness perfume thing. And then again, we don't talk about honorable because. 
they are all dishonorable. So I know them to give themselves title and honorable. All them things, I hate them things, they know people. When people come with them shit there. Because it don't make sense. Take a sip off of my tea, because I'm drinking right now some ginger, turmeric, and sour sap leaf boiled together. Yeah, man, with a little spoon, teaspoon, uh, um, tablespoon, well, teaspoon of honey. Yeah, man. So, I come back to what I say now. When I find out, I do the research, I mean, things come back to me. I say, I don't go, go look it up and say, I'm going to say something. Because all this woman has reached us, for me, the house. <laughs> the house the speaker of the house. And I know that's an independent thing. And that could never happen in no country. No prime minister, president, wife, be the house. You know what I mean? Well, you talk about um, prime minister, right? Be the house of speaker. So that's what you see, we don't know. So what happened to even the governor general? Where am I doing? I'll never next fucking thing, you know. I never want to deal with him right now. But you what now? We go back to the story. Right, in 2020, this woman, um, Andrew Wallace, as well as him, he him, him had the head of the government, a pinter, deputy speaker. Right, deputy house speaker, you know. 2020, that happened, you know. Just catch me drift and see where I come from, you know. 2020. He appointed her deputy speaker. So they might cook up something from there. From 2020, you know. So from the election. So him 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 him, 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 him make sure to shift that. As he might play him three care of them, you know. And put that in and, and people don't really realize what's going on, you know. Because everybody will say, oh yeah, yeah, I'll leave it alone, right? Because it was deputy speaker. Because, you know, and she used to go on with her like a bullies him and things like that. But it's the start of a fire. Right? And believe you me, nobody don't really take it serious. Not even the um, PMP, them sit down like them either. That's why I said all the while, say, them are people don't really want to win election. You know? Them want the JLP win because they all in it together or something. I don't know what's going on. Because, <laughs> you know, me, me's a politics. Fanatics and we follow politics all over the world and there's no country on the opposition side when I really sit down and make them people get away them things. And no matter if they, if they even all do it, all count them in numbers. It don't matter. Them still have a vote. Them is opposition. opposition. They are the country opposition. So, me not know. So, they never really um, making no, um, nothing, this nothing at that time when friendship appointed deputy. Right? So fast forward now, or you know, um, go forward now. We are talking about um, then 20, the 22nd of June, right, 2023. She and Nesta Morgan come out on JIS. Right, JIS. Remember, you know, it's like a company investing themselves, you know. <laughs> Forget to be driven, you know. Like a company invest in themselves. Right? Them. So this is a um, premature planting when we are talking about people. You see, it? guess it? what I say, you know. I look at me and say, from 2020, she appointed deputy speaker. So I have an intention from there. I'm about never pay no mind, right? From 2020, from the election run. They make themselves position themselves. So she not the line, forget it. So they never plan them things now with that woman who was there before all right so you up now as i'm saying 2020 21 22 so 2022 right she and nessa morgan company guys i do them like a trickery but never appear no mind you know but as i'm saying them use nesta morgan <laughs> oh boy I you know I say, well, then nobody independent there, you know. So it's a company I inv investigate them ones. Like it's like the police I investigate themselves. And I don't have to talk about. So them bring in Minister Morgan. You know, him, him tell lie and thing like that. Cause he's Andrew boy, he's Andrew Wallace T boy, you know. So he must shit them over put it, put him there for if he asks her a question. That not true, no wait. You can't say right there, so it's a red card. So but before me but before me say anything more, you see GIS people. JIS stands for Jamaica Information Service, you know. 
that is equivalent to JBC in England, right? Public station who deal with um, that situation. So them is an independent body. But now, even the JIA, come used to work at JBC, you know, people, back in the days, you know. And JIA is building, used to the right on JBC building next door. And I'm equivalent, the same thing, them work, you know, them, them do the free things for government. And I'm independent. Them not really are, but this and JIA for me is here right now. Them in the pocket of the government. It's not JIA for me, you know, before. Robinson them used to be the, um, the manager and them people there. Very independent, so them can't tell me nothing. So, you know, what really happened there? Them full of shit, GIS, Information Service. They are not independent again, they are not for the people. And this is what I say, Andrew Wallace buy out everybody, you know. And that's the world, that's why the, the, the country is so corrupted. Because you can't just call him alone corrupted, you know. He corrupted and then, so the people him, who him drag in just through money and them, them are doing the way, me say. And a dance of a, of a theme tune. That means they're damn corrupted as well. So they are pure nastiness that Jamaica and the uptown and them people where so them represent people. Yeah. So that interview. Well, you know. I don't know. I would I would it um interview. Where, where the woman had the name again? Emila. I don't know. I don't I don't even know. In fact, interview with him, you know, because new people are work at GIS now. When we do GIS, 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 people, independent team, you know what I mean? They're not side with no government, but they put out the government um, business and things like that. But they're not going really, uh, they, they, they is more, they be criticized because they're dead, they're independent. But now they side with the government, as far as me, see, I mean, I see them at, because this me see I go on. And so that interview, done, we're going to show you that interview. So I just try to break it down again. 2020, 2020 she appointed deputy that are, after they win the election. I must swear in and things like that. So they have them things set. And they know them are do all along. It's a plan, plan, plan thing. And then as I'm saying, June 22nd, 2023, they come out with this interview. So they might clear the way now for what I just said I come up now, you know. <laughs> Yo, 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 brother, 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 I can take a sip of me herbal tea. Calm my nerves down. Mmm. You see it? 2022, June, this interview. We don't call it interview, but it come, pay them, pay the way, you know, people call it a big thing now, you know. Make people see something, but pay, make them make it up and tell people a lie. And them use the guy, the nasty Morgan. To Nash Nesta Morgan to, 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 to the house to the, <laughs> the answer the question. And a pretty stuff like well and anything serious. Pay shit and gutter. And here comes the big one now, people. And the 27th of September, she was appointed the speaker of the house. Look at that, you know. So you can see and pick from where I come from and talk about in you know, this and say. The missing, the links, them, they were links together and everything. No doubt about that, easily. Yeah, man, 2023, 2020, she appointed deputy speaker. So that means she had the wings. So she did one step there. 2023, she moved forward now and put her foot in the ring. I saw them do it, you know. And, they, and, and all of them things that they, 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 the PMP never see, if they click out against, if, if a Jamaica Labour, if, if um. The British Labour Party of England, they don't they, 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 they see, they don't bore well in that long fucking time and lick out. But they must sleep. That's why I said them all night together. Don't, make, don't, 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 don't put nothing past them, you know. So now I'm saying, 27th of September, she was appointed. So the 22nd of June, so you have June, July, August, September, that's three months down the line. Three months on the line. So that speech you should do the 22nd of June. At the way she will open up. They might have do it if you put all over people's eye, you know, but not my fucking eye. They can't do that. So that them do now. And then three months time now, she appointed, I appointed just like that. 
and then the PMP party them um, endorse it. The man never had the, the lick out. Angela Brown, but the one of them had a dance it a one by one. Him Peter Philip come out and I'll him try, him, him, him let me down. But you know, that is it. So me not, me not really, uh, me not understand this shit. You know what I mean? But I just say it go. But you know, at the end of the day, that is that. And it's very sticky and stucky. But we show these people, play them three cards, can't Jamaican people, get away with it. All them youth and people can't see it. I'm not a politician, but me personally, I'm going to do 10 times better than that. They will never, and now Mark will come and come ball in a, in a, in a, in a budget speech. speech. Me not big him up for that, you know. But when I realize and go back and, and, and look on this um, swearing in and know that they are supported and give, it, give them the, the, give the thumbs up, the whole of them. So when I'm talking about their shit, so the, 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 the GLP is supposed to come out, come back, come beat them. That's what I'm saying, you know. They might go on and go on, you know. I don't see what I wish them out. You know where people, I don't even blow. Can you see right now? I don't care about that, even bother, you know. Go over this and talk, talk, talk. Take a lick, sip of my tea again. Because you're up now. I just joke. Mm. Just big joke. So anyway, we are getting to the video at this moment in time. This interview on the 22nd of June with Dirty Nestor Morgan with the JIS, Jamaica Information Service. Here goes. Boom. And you have to encourage yourself. You have to talk to yourself yes. and say, I'm going to get over this. Wonderful. And then you go to the word and the word say, Lo, I am with you always. <laughs> you just encourage yourself in the Lord. So I want to thank um, our listeners um, for tuning in. Um, those on social media, particularly those on TikTok, I want to thank our listeners on Love 101 FM. We have a special guest this morning. She's not a minister. But it is indeed good morning, Minister. But we have the most honorable, well, I call her the most honorable, First Lady Julia Tolness. <laughs> good morning, Mrs. Tolness. Hi, good morning, Robert. Good morning, <laughs> listeners. I'm interviewing the wife of the Prime Minister, so I have to be on my best behavior. I'm going to fix my tie and fix my clothes because I don't want any reports to go back. Mrs. Julia Tolness and her proper title is the most honorable Juliet Holness, Member of Parliament for East Rural St. Andrew. I suspect she has a lot more. I think you have some ACCA. <laughs> yes, what, I have what, FCCA, ACCA, MSC. I don't use any of those. I am someone who is happy to have no title. So what is the F <laughs> no, but for the purpose of fellow, our listeners? Fellow in a chartered accountant. So you're um, a chartered accountant? Qualified accountant. So what is the other one? You mentioned another big one. So, so it's FCCA is when you become a fellow, right. having had your ACCA, which so, is what is... That's the 12 exam that you have to do. Yes, the whole heap of exams. Takes five years to do this. Yes, but if you do an MSc, which I did, so I did an MSc in accounting, right. it short circuit and you only have to do a year or so, just the third year um, in qualifying for your ACCA. So people may be wondering, why is the most honorable Juliet Wellness, mm -hmm. as we say, first lady, is in the studio with us today? Yes. The first lady, or the most honorable Juliet Wellness, chairs a very important committee in parliament. It is the committee that approves and examines the Constituency Development Fund. What is the Constituency Development Fund? So every year, Members of Parliament have to submit to the CDF programs and plans that they have for their constituency. We get about $20 million allocated to the constituency. Not to us. We don't get the money. We don't see it. It, it don't is, go in your pocket. It don't go in our pocket. <laughs> it is allocated to the, the um, let me fix this properly first. It shipped off a while ago. <laughs> so I have to make sure the people on TikTok uh, know what is happening. Right, so. So they can see us. Right, so the Constituency Development Fund is every year members of parliament have to send in programs 
to the CDF office and those programs are assessed. They look at the viability of them, whether they follow the government rules and so on. And then Mrs. Holness has a committee that is populated with members of the opposition, members of government, and they go through these projects with a fine tooth comb to make sure that they fulfill the requirements. But she knows more about it than I, but before we go to CDF, you are the member of parliament for East Rural St. Andrew. Where is that? East Rural St. Andrew is just about between St. Thomas. So persons have an appreciation. It is the last constituency that you would consider to be in Kingston. And why it's not Kingston, it's St. Andrew. It is because it is rural. It literally is Harborview coming from the airport just when you reach a roundabout of Harborview and it stretches all the way to St. Thomas and it stretches all the way back up by Constitution Hill and goes back into Mavis Bank and touches St. Thomas again and it touches parts of Port. Chuck's constituency all the way at Norbrook and it comes back around and down through Garden Town then touches Fable Williams seat at Eastern where we have Kintyre and it goes <laughs> yes yeah, it's a massive seat well, you don't tell them about how it's delight no, no so if I tell you all the communities so my constituents know I know every single community in the constituency we have over 156 of them and if i try to call them some people are gonna feel jealous i know every single one and i've visited every single one so people who live in the seat will say mrs holness but how you know about Rosie's valley we never got to say it i said yes i got there because that is where the water spring from so i have to go and check out the water source so i know every single every single stitch of the constituency so, so hold on so let's just let's just start at the beginning <laughs> so you are you're on the border right at the bridge between saint thomas and saint andrew that's Absolutely. your border right so yes. when you leave out what is it nine miles yes when you reach 10 miles so we go from harbour view seven through to 10 miles and when you leave 10 miles you're in saint thomas and i have sections of my constituency that i have to drive through saint thomas to get back What's to the name of that one on the hill there again the way on in the bush in, near saint thomas you have you have two of them so you have somerset, somerset. and you have bite on blocksboro from somerset. the bull bay side and somerset you literally have to drive through saint thomas to get there we have had sections of the constituency that broke off in previous rains and there's no way to access it from saint andrew anymore so you have to access it from saint thomas so you drive you're now coming to harbour you reach the harbour you run about Mm -hmm. You don't go to Port Royal on the left. You're coming straight down. And where do you turn? When you get to Harborview, either you enter Harborview itself or when you're on the roundabout, you literally pass Palisades, turn off, and continue straight into St. Thomas. And all of that is East Rural St. Andrew. Right, so let us go from the other side now. So you're in Papine. Mm -hmm. Your office is in Papine. Right. So let me help to break it down for you why it's so challenging. <laughs> Because it's because the constituency is big, but it's cut off anyway. So Harborview cut across the mountains all the way into the back with August Stone. Oh. So it comes across all of that mountain. So it doesn't travel so, through um, Kingston. It, it literally mountain view. right. So Mountain View Avenue is not that goes back to Eastern. So it literally goes at the back of that mountain and Harbor View, Harbor Heights, Bay Shore, Melbrook is on the hill going up, and then all of the Bull Bay Hills now, um, which includes Saint Benedict's Heights and Seven Miles, come all the way back to Dallas Castle, uh, and it comes all the way across the hill into what is the Kintyre Division, which has Dallas and Cane River and Baita Bloxboro Friendship Brookside. And then it goes over beside Eastern. But how do you drive out this country? It is hard. It <laughs> is hard. Yes, all the time. Um, all to campaign. In the campaign, it took more than two weeks to drive out the seat because the road conditions were awful when because I you go up to got the, the seat. Mountain, eh? I go all the way up to the Blue Mountain side. So it's a, it's, it is massive. So you come across from Dallas Castle side, you literally, if you're driving it, we drive and come back at the Bridge of Hope River where we meet Eastern again. 
and then you can turn off and go into Kintyre proper, or you pass through Papine, which is not my constituency. So Papine is not yours. No, and a lot of but people Kintyre think it is. is yours. But Kintyre is. But Kintyre and Papine is almost the same. It, they're, they're like almost kissing. <laughs> All right. But when you get now to Rasta Corner, right by Where, Skyline Drive. Those who don't know, Rasta Skyline Drive is the official name. And on the right hand side of Skyline Drive, everybody know Rasta Corner. You see it, you see all the Rasta colors, and they hang out there and they play games. And so you Mr. can Lou buy things. Mr. Lou is fully own. Wow. Yeah, man. So that's touchy. You put it up? No, me can't say me the government. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but you are the MP, and you <laughs> wrote about them say the MP fault. So if the statue go up, are the MP put up this yes, statue? And it was a pleasure to be a part of that process with the ministry of culture around the gender and culture and entertainment and sports culture um help also from tourism resources the parish council we were able to put up a massive statue in honor of miss lou and more than that literally creating a space with um walkways of nice colored bricks colored in the jamaican colors all the shops it has really elevated the space and so when tourists come or for those of us who are local tourists like me you get a chance to walk up and down in garden town and really feel a sense of upliftment and remembering the culture and where we come from in terms of our dialect so 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 far right, so we have dealt with it. what is the biggest issue in its rural? Oh my, it's many, but I would say roads. We have, in terms of roads, I did the estimate once, the budget for the entire country for roads is what it would take us to fix the roads in East Rural if they gave it to us one year. Mm -hmm. People are saying... Yes, the road budget for the entire country, the road budget for the whole country, all of Jamaica, is so, what we so would need. if the need. government decided to fix every road in East Rural, no other constituency would get a road. Absolutely. That's what would happen. That's a lot of roads. It's, yes, it's a lot. A lot of them were designated farm roads. And even that makes it more challenging. So what I've done strategically, and you see you ask me how the constituency stretch. Strategically, I've looked at the main roads. What connects you from St. Thomas back to Papine? What connects you from Mavis Bank back to Papine, Garden Town, and from Maryland and Woodford back to Papine or back over to Norbrook? And I've made it so that you can literally drive through the constituency faster because all our main roads are strategically slowly being repaired. Well, a lot of the water that we drink come from your constituency. All of the water that you drink coming from my constituency. <laughs> the Hope River. Uh, what's yeah. the other one? No, the Hope River is a primary river coming down and then the rest come from Yellow side. So coming out oh. of St. Thomas, the Yellow but River. To come through you. Everything comes through East Royal St. Andrew. <laughs> and we still ball that we don't have enough water because though we produce all the water, it is coming down in our rivers and aquifers and go over into the Mona Dam where it is processed for most of Kingston and St. Andrew. So we are very important people, East Rural St. Andrew. But you're married to another important person who is the Prime Minister. <laughs> How long have you been married? 26 years. Oh, Mr. Wallace, you don't look that old. I'm I am sorry. only 30. You, you don't look that <laughs> old. <laughs> you, have, you have children? Yes, we have two sons. Um, one graduated yesterday. He did IB studies. The other is off at university doing AI. He has always been a little computer whiz. And artificial intelligence is what he's interested in. All right. So what is it like, though, being married to the prime minister? It's not special. It's normal. <laughs> <laughs> being married to the Prime Minister is just being married to my Andrew. And that's what it is for me. Because you knew him when he knew, so... Yes, well, we... <laughs> I read the story that... No, we... You on a house top and no. you don't sink. Lord. And you pass in. Yeah. And him interfere with you. No. <laughs> no, I wasn't somebody who was interested in guys in high school, you know. I, I really never paid them much mind. But he was always someone that you would look up to. So the zinc story is true? It's true. He was on the rooftop, working on the rooftop, helping with the tarring. He would help with the workmen. And when I pass, I see him helping to 
renovate his mother's house and I found that absolutely appealing as so a young you person. No, you know, <laughs> when I was supposed to go to the sixth form ball, my sister for some reason seemed to think he would have been a good and nice catch. She seemed to have known that he liked me and she said, why don't you go with Andrew? And I said, all right, you know, I'll give him a try. <laughs> and I told him, I think my sister actually told him that I would go with him to six form ball and he said yes and that was the start of a beautiful beautiful relationship many, well don't tell us how many years ago 32 oh, years no so you've been married <laughs> how many years we have been married 26 years and, and we dated for seven years seven years yes <laughs> so I said, you really met the man with seven years yeah we, did. <laughs> we decided early seven when when whenever i have enough of a chance i one day i'll write the book my grandmother and my mother was one, Andrew will tell you, who say that when the man want the milk and him can get it free, him don't bother buy the cow. So but you have to buy the milk and all right, you have to buy the pasta. Farm. Yeah, man. <laughs> but but uh, uh, it's a beautiful marriage. We've seen you guys out in public and it's an inspiration to a lot of young people out there. And you have a beautiful family, but the people want to hear about why CDF? the CDF is important. Well, before I move on to why the CDF is important, I'll encourage Jamaicans to continue to encourage family. It is actually what builds communities. It is what builds constituencies. So I will not leave this conversation, Minister Morgan, without encouraging Jamaicans to start to rebuild the family. The family is critical to how we think, how we behave. Yes, let's rewind right there. Hear this? Juliet will is talking about family and children and family like she have any she don't have no family morals you know believe you me you know that's what i'm gonna say this is an interview of paving the way to come in and kind of way into the speaker's chair all plan people all plan remember you know this is a woman will say anybody who Anyway, see people live, um, PMP live, what, them, what you call it, um, a spear dump, it's like river, river, river dump and things like that. So she had to talk about people with family, so how can she come now and talk about family morals? When all these little kids die, this woman never come out yet and come support no kids and no mother. When this young woman my die, she never come out yet, which she's supposed to be a first lady for the country. You never hear her voice come out. Only time she come out is when she had defend her slackness, right? And she now come and talk about, um, you see, this is just a move, plan move, because as I'm saying before, this is something well planned. You can see her face. She just wants some easy question. There's nothing them asking her. Well, that guy asking her anyway. He can't call it. It's a marriage in the party. Because as I'm saying before, it's like, you know, police, I interview them oneself. <laughs> so you're gonna get any truth out of it. But we can see it. From a longer time, she now have no moral, no family moral. She no respect woman because when the, when the lady, the, the lady get beaten with a chair, she never come out and thing like that. But yet, you know, she had talked now. And then this is the thing where people can't get, you know, yeah, you are some of the um, illiterate people who now come out and I say, oh, yeah, right, yeah, lady. You know, blind as, yeah, you know, I'm tell you something, people. But anyway, this is what I try to say with this woman, talking pure bullshit. She and Nesta Morgan, because they are all Jamaica, Liard party people. Yeah, man. The family is critical to how we think, how we behave, our outlook on the future, and how we literally build Jamaica. Okay, they are actually, right now, the highest number of people to have ever watched a TikTok live. Mm -hmm. Almost 400 people, plus we have people on GIS, Facebook, Love FM. <laughs> I didn't know you were that popular. No, you need to I'm come not. and host the show. <laughs> not so enough. tell us, CDF, so CDF, why is it important? It's important. It would have been introduced by our former Prime Minister Bruce Golden 
at $40 million at the time. It's now only $20 million. Do you because know where they put it? Always budgetary restrictions is a challenge and having persons in our constituencies understanding what CDF is for and how it should operate and even MPs is critical. So we are at $20 million. And there are upper and lower limits for so many different things. Right. CDF is supposed to be a quick response by members of parliament. So if you write to the agencies, every single thing we do through CDF, you should be able to get it through the ministry and agencies of government. However, sometimes it's not moving as fast. So you have a debt in the constituency and the person didn't realize that they could come and get help and they only have two or three weeks to go, they can come to a constituency office and request help. If they write to the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, which they can do, it may take them a little longer. So the idea behind CDF is an emergency response, a response in areas where you may have been advocating as a representative to like NWA or to the Ministry of Agriculture because you need to fix a road and you're not getting it at the speed that you would like, you can now look at your CDF with your community members, all your constituents, and say, all right, what do you guys think is important? And if they say, this road, we just need $1 million to fix it, and it's a big thing for us, you can do it through your CDF. You can do school projects through your CDF, fencing, asphalting, but guess what? It's not a whole heap of money. And that is the important thing for persons to understand. So let us go through what the CDF areas are. First big one is infrastructure. You are allowed to spend no less than 2.5 million of your 20 million on infrastructure projects. You can spend a maximum of $10 million. Now each seat is different. Some seats, infrastructure is not critical, other seats it is. So efforts are made to ensure MPs just don't go off and do whatever they feel like. You can't say I'm not doing anything in terms of infrastructure. You see me, I want all of my money to be used for welfare. I'm only doing food packages. No, you're not allowed. Limits are set so that you must think of something sustainable that you can do to uplift the communities in the seat. The categories, though, mm -hmm. okay? So you, you give the MP the cash and then the MP give the constituents the cash. That's how it works, right? Because that's what people say, that the MP get the money. Oh, I realize that you want to dissuade persons. No. <laughs> MP, MPs will never get the cash. As no, a matter of fact, MPs will never get the cash. You will never get a dollar in your pocket. So MPs do not at, get CDF money in their pocket. No time at all. You are either paying a contractor, and as we go through the categories, or your actual constituent. Either the check goes to the constituent, or it goes to the hospital, to the school, to the clinic, to wherever you're going to run the test, to the, to the funeral home. It must be going to a third party that is not the member of parliament, that is not the member of parliament family, that is not the member of parliament friend. Well, you know, the reason why I ask it that way, is that I have heard MP getting money and I want to give you our MP teeth up the money our MP this. So it's very important for you to make it clear that MPs do not handle the money. No, as a matter of fact, the rules are so stringent that you have to run a proper office and document everything that you do. So if you are doing something as basic under the welfare element of the program, you're doing food packages, you can't just get the money and give out the cash. You have to document who got the food package, how much was spent on average on the packages. You have to also give a quote of who will supply the items for the packages. So some persons will have the supermarket or the wholesale pack them for them. For me, it is actually far more beneficial to my constituents if we buy the stuff and then sit down and pack them out. Costs more, but we can stretch the money a little further. And you still have to document. So when I'm giving out food packet, people say, Lord, Miss Oles, what do you mean? Why do I have to tell you my name? You have to, because I, though they know that I can eat 2,000 pound of flour, they still want me to show them who got the 2,000 pound of flour. And that is the fact of it. And over time, people are getting to understand that government is functioning in a way that we are accountable 
And a big part of that accountability is ensuring that the people who get the benefit genuinely needed it and that they can track the persons who get it. And to be honest, sometimes I even call the beneficiaries. They'll call and say, come and collect your checks. Um, the MP recommended, Mr. Morgan recommend that you get $10,000 under the care program, under welfare, or you need help with indigent housing, or you probably need help with some sort of small business. They call and they verify that individuals who we documented as having gotten a benefit actually got it. So, so all right, so let us go through the steps. So, uh, a constituent has a need, mm -hmm. they reach out to their MP's office mm -hmm. and they visit the office. Mm -hmm. What happens then? All right, so you have two needs community related needs and individual and personal needs. When you go to the MP's office, you're supposed to fill out what is called a needs assessment form and you sign that form. If you are not able to read and write well, the office will help you read through and document for you and you put your X at the bottom to mark that you are the one who signed for it. Phone number is there, who they should contact and you document what your need is. The system has changed. CDF has further upgraded. Now, constituency secretaries and individuals who work in an office can no longer sign the need assessment form in putting that form to the CDF for processing. The member of parliament have to sign every single CDF request that comes in via that need assessment form. So the MP has a lot of administrative work to do. So if you get a thousand requests, you have to sit down and you have to review that 1,000 requests and you sign. Now you have to sign based on how much money you have and the allocation for the different areas. So we'll go into those areas afterwards. So, so all right, so let's say, well, it's back to school season mm -hmm. and people are now interested in getting assistance. So let's say you're a parent and you have two children who are going to one going to university and one going to high school and you go to the office. What mm -hmm. happens there? So persons would come every year and say they need help in terms of back to school. We no longer take um, school lists in terms of the book list. I don't know for other MPs, it's very difficult for us. My constituency, we give out book vouchers and then you use those vouchers to go to the bookstore. For everyone who needs school fee, we make every effort to help. Remember, under this government, we are putting a policy that $5,000 at high school is what you must try to find if you cannot afford the fees and no child should be refused. And so I make a point of saying to my constituents, if you can't afford it, I will make sure that we provide that $5,000 from the constituency development fund. You may not be able to even find a dollar. And we write to the schools and say, these are the individuals that we are making the commitment that we will pay the school fees for. Your needs assessment is done in the same way. It is then sent to SDC for me, social development, which is where our checks are processed. And the checks are processed, they come back to the office and people could come and pick up their own check because it is written to the school, to the institution. So it's not written to the parent. It's never written to the parent or the child. Everything is written to the institution. And those checks, when they pick them up, they take them to the school. I don't allow them to come and pick up the checks because I found a far more efficient way. I batch all the checks and say, these checks are for color bar. I have 40 checks for color bar, the name of the students, the amount for each student, and the total on the check tallies to that and it's sent. So parents don't have to go through the cost of traveling back to the constituency office and then having to travel down to the school. We try to manage that process for them. And so that is how we do the distribution as it relates to education assistance. I go further too to say so if you're having a problem money, with any school, call us. So how much money do you spend on education in your country? The minimum for every single member of parliament under the CDF rule is 5 million of the 20 million. So every MP must, when must. I, spend, I spend eight. You can spend <laughs> up, up to a maximum so, of 10. So the cap is 10, yes. but the minimum is five. So no member of parliament can say, look, we don't really have any students needing education assistance. We don't need any book voucher. We don't need to give them any tablets. We can take that money and use it to do some roads because that's what we need or we need housing. No, we have stipulated that a minimum of 5 million must be allocated to education because we value education. So do you help tertiary students on the CDF as well? I do help tertiary students. It's very difficult. It is not so easy to give one person 
200,000, 500,000, and a million. And every effort is made to ensure that whatever benefits you give, it is approximately the same amount that you give everyone in the constituency. So if you send in a request for a million dollars for one child, and everybody else, you give them $10,000, we're going to call you in for it. We will want to know what is that child to you and why they are so important and special. So, so you give assistance to tertiary tertiary secondary students you give secondary yes what so all right so everything so, from basic school so we do education now mm -hmm. what about let's say there's a elderly person in the constituency mm -hmm. and they are they, they die and they don't have any help how does that work persons also approach the constituency office for help with the benefit but before you go into that we have a voice note on our WhatsApp line, mm -hmm. I neglected, mm -hmm. because I was so excited to do this interview, <laughs> to give you the numbers. Um, and it's 968-8327, 968-8328. And our WhatsApp line is 876-997-3125. So let me go again. To call in to ask questions of... The most honorable Juliet Holness, it's 876-968-8327, 876-968-8328. And to call our WhatsApp line or send a voice note or a WhatsApp message, it's 876-997-3125. Nadine, you have call. you have a call online. Call Hello? Yes, go right Hello. ahead. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yes, we're hearing you. Um, could I, I would like to speak to the Honorable Minister Oni. Well, Mrs. Ones is on the line. You can go ahead. Hello. Um, I would like to speak to her off here. Ask her if I could leave my number and get back and to get back to me, please. No problem. Well, we will take so, your number. So I will say to any other caller, my constituency office number is up on every single social media platform. You can just take a look, just search for Juliet Holness and you'll find it. If you Hello. call down by the party headquarters, you'll get the number. Same at Parliament, you'll get the contact number and you can reach me there. Hello? So, all right, Nadine, can you take her number and, mm -hmm. and then yes. we will reach and out to her have, after. We also have a voice note. And we have a voice note, okay. Mrs. Holness. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Hello? Hello? Yes. I think that's the yes, same yes. call. All right, so Mrs. Olness, so you, so we've gone through education, but we're now at welfare. All right. So I'm going to make sure that we wrap up by letting the public know all the categories, and it's easy to understand them. Infrastructure we discuss, education is one. It actually falls under what is called um, human and social development, which also include cultural activities, sporting activities, for the development of the human being. Um, economic enablement, most people when they hear it, they don't know what that is. It's really help with small business. So the name economic enablement turns off a lot of persons, but it means if you need a $50,000 to be able to buy some equipment, some tools to help to fix a business, it can be done through this year. Shop. Shops are done through it as well. I'm gonna go through them one, one by one. Disaster mitigation is also another. And we discuss some of welfare and emergency, which would include the funeral, if you flood out, if you need medical help, if you need um, prescription, if you need assistance with two little play and some zinc and thing, because guess what? CDF has never been able to sustain in a big way building a house. And you know already, Minister Morgan, that I have exciting news about how I am using CDF for the first time in history to build at least three houses for my constituents. Three houses? Yes, and I'll tell you how. So, so <laughs> all right, so, and I'm, and I'm so, watching the, the, the what's the TikTok and thing. Oh, yeah, the voice note yeah, now. Yes, yes, please, the voice all right. note first. Good morning, Minister. Good morning, Miss MP. I am calling from Top Road, Mavis Bank. Hey, Mrs. Holness. If rain do not fall, we don't get no water in Tap Road. No water at all if rain do not fall, please, ma'am. And we need the, the pharmacy down by the health center. So we'd like to know what happened to the pharmacy. 
We have to go all the way to Garden Town to get the medication, please. We ask you, know, please, if you could open back the pharmacy, don't buy Mavis Bank Health Center. And we're not getting no water in Top Road from Prime. Hold on, hold on, sir. Give me Korean. Please, Mrs. Olis, may I beg you? Oh, well, if you're repeating it, that's all. So let me answer. I hope you are listening. As it relates to water at Top Road, remember, we would not have been getting NWC water because there were pipes not sufficiently connected to be able to do so. We started a process of piping from Clivesdale coming all the way around. And in recent times, we were able to connect coming from Mount Fletcher side. So you are supposed to be able to get water. And I had checked, you have been able to get water at Top Road. If you are not getting any more, you would have to tell me why so that I can check it. And I will go and check with NWC. So the water pressure is not going to be high. It is not going to come into your homes. But what they did was to carry to some of the special stands where persons could get water at Top Road, which is fairly, fairly rural. Now, once I was informed that connections for the pipes keep bursting, and they have gone back and fixed. So I will touch back base with NWC and I will come and speak with the community again. We have met on the water issue more than once. We are not going to stop until we get water to every single house at Top Road because we have meters there. So it means that 40 years ago, water was there. We can get water back to the citizens at Top Road. For the clinic, the prescription medication that persons used to be able to fill at the pharmacy, not since COVID have we been able to fill them there because they are downsized the clinic during COVID period. We have actually written to the Ministry of Health and I will follow up as it relates to the pharmacy as to why we do not have it re-established yet. And I'll get back to you on that. All right. So we have a we have a we have a WhatsApp message. Mm -hmm. um, to you, good morning, Minister. First, I must congratulate you for knowing your constituency, mm -hmm. which a lot of MPs don't. Secondly, I like the idea of MPs not handling the funds because a lot of times there is mishandling of funds, and this is from Vicky. So mm -hmm. she's referring to the CDF. And mm -hmm. also, I want to, every week, every week, Nadine, I have to tell the people on TikTok that the Woods Road is not mine. <laughs> I know I fix a lot of roads, I know I fix a lot of roads, but the Woods Road is not mine. However, mm -hmm. the National Works Agency have assured me that they'll be doing some repairs on the road urgently because they recognize the issues. We also have good, from Ashley who says, good morning. My question is, how can I apply for a farm work program? <laughs> I'm certified in early child education, housekeeping, and also a phlebotomy technician do you have any advice for, for vicky um vicky Not, well this one is ashley. well actually the most asked question in every single constituency is how can i apply for a farm road um farm work, um card uh, that is applicants. that is the most asked question of all so it is not all farm work there is a hotel program and if you are trained and certified especially if you have some amount of heart training if you haven't gotten it from anywhere else and you make an effort even for a limited period of months to try to intern with a hotel or guest house so you have actual experience you can apply under that program you can apply directly through the ministry of labor or through your member of parliament now as it relates to directly farm farm work Farm work, we find more men get through for the program than women because it is usually based on what the farms require. So sometimes we'll get funny requests like they need somebody who is no more than 90 pounds, that is no taller than five feet because they want them to be very petite, picking strawberries and they're keeping it low. And it, so it really depends on what the farms yeah, before want. Before you complete, we have a caller in the Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead. Good, good yes, morning. go ahead. Are you speaking to me? Hello? Yes, good morning. Welcome Hi. to Good Morning, Minister. Hi. Hi, how are you? I, I was just calling in regard to an uh, area in Kentire, um, Camp View Avenue, where the road has fallen as in it's dropped. Kentire is that? No,
is in Kintyre proper. I know exactly where it is. So you're aware of the problem. No, I don't know the road dropping. When you say the road drop, what do you mean? I want to make sure that it's not something that has happened in the last week or two. No, man. No, no, no. It has happened some time ago. So it's just like a slope. Oh, all right. So you're talking about the piece that go around to back road? So around camp. You ready to camp here? No, camp view road coming down. All right. And it comes down to the shop. Is that the area you're speaking about? It's, um, how do I explain? You know where the square is and you go up on that hill and you're heading as if you're heading to the campsite? Yes. That takes you to almost the garden zone, but it's by foot. It's not by um vehicular traffic. It's by foot? Right. It's Camp View Road, where it dropped. The road drops, so it's like a slope. Yes, sir. But what is your concern about there? All right, the road has fought, it has, there's a slope there, right? And um, it's very difficult for, for traffic, for vehicles to go up and to go down on that road. And my grandmother lives around there and she has fallen twice trying to traverse that road. So, and she's been to your office quite some time to get some answers as to, you know, if there's any plans for it or not. I am going to make sure I know exactly where you're speaking about because I am thinking of two possible spaces. And one is closer to the square where there is no road anymore that goes around to back road by Tai Tai section. All right. There is no possibility of driving there anytime soon. No, not there. I have. Mm hmm. So you know what I'll do? I'll ask you to just send me some pictures under WhatsApp to the office number, and then I'll get back to you from that. All right. I think that's the best bet. I'm not there, but it's... So, so we know exactly where you're looking at. Yeah, because um, she's been trying to reach you for quite some time. I send a WhatsApp to the office, we will get it, and just send the pictures. So I'm going to take some time because I'm not in the area, so I might have to get there to get the actual. No, man, you don't have to worry about it. We'll take it. your number. We'll take your number. We'll have the office reach out to you. I think we have another one. Um, What's the number? What's no, the number? we'll take your number. Oh. Give us your number. So give you on here? All right, so we. we, we... Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Not online. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Solis. Um. I want to have this a question. I would like to know if if is not all the, the, the MP and the councillor them get anything to work on the road them year by year or whatsoever it may be. Because we have two a MP and a councillor, Mrs. Juliet Cockburn and Mr. John Myers. And may I tell you, there is a two worse, worse. MP and councillor I ever see in our district, Doncaster, Montauga. Them not business with, with no time at all. When we would work with two time, them don't look at the citizen after do it in Doncaster. Right now, foot walker can hardly walk in Doncaster. And the two of them don't turn the black of them eye. No time at all, no time at all. So I don't know if them don't get any money to deal with our consequences. So I'm asking you, please, if them don't get... All right, so I can answer for callers generally. This was a voice clip. Members of Parliament, only allocation that they're able to do any sort of direction of how they want to impact the constituency is exactly what we were discussing, the Constituency Development Fund. It cannot fix road. If you are able to do a road out of it, it would be one million, two million, or you'd have to be doing that road over a period, especially in constituencies like a West Rural and East Rural, and all the rural seats in particular, based on the volume of roads we have and the condition of the roads that we have. So if you remember at the beginning, I said 10 million is the maximum on infrastructure. Now in rural seats, here is a challenge. While you have terrible roads in rural seats, and a large road network, those are the seats that also need significant help with farmers, significant help with the children for school, significant amount of food packages, help with ben de de benef death benefits, seats that are not middle class, upper class, are 
usually the seats and particularly my experiences almost all are rural seats are seats that need a lot in welfare support out of the constituency development fund so do not think that your mps can fix everything and they can fix it at the pace sometimes that you'd like and the fact that something is not fixed doesn't mean that they haven't turned the black of their eye it means that they know of the problem and they would have communicated it to the NWA. I will also point out to the MP in question and the councillor that you have identified an area and that they should come and speak with the community because what I have done in my own seat, like my Roberts Field Road, I have for six years gotten a grant, for six years I've been advocating between JSF and the Ministry of Finance and NWA, and I haven't gotten anywhere yet. But guess what? I go back to the community and tell them each year, we don't want to come yet. This is where we reach. This is what we can do in the meantime. And I know the condition is bad. Right now, I know I can't drive go up there. I cannot go there unless I get a back road to go and try and level out some of it. And they've been working for the last six years to get that road fixed. So it doesn't mean they're not working. It just means that resources are limited. I will take the time to say, many times in my constituency, I have to explain, when we in Jamaica used to waste money, we didn't understand how far back we were going. Years gone by, we had money we were borrowing, and we didn't spend it well as a country. We have gone a far way from there. We are doing extremely well. We are growing the country, which gives us far more resources to be able to do the things that we want to do for our communities. And this is without charging additional taxes to do so. So I will tell persons, reach out to your MPs, reach out to your councillors, but understand that the resources they get themselves is limited. Councillors in the parish council for KCMC, their allocation between road and all of the other benefits is about $10 million, while the MP's allocation is 20. And I can tell you, if the councillor is able to do one road for the year, they will not be able to do more than one. They will not be able to do two, three, four roads in a division. And that gives you a sense of how challenging it is to expect that they themselves will fix it. So I, I heard Prime Minister yesterday announcing the role of a, of a member of parliament mm -hmm. and giving us job descriptions and the same for cabinet ministers. And I want people to start have the discussions with their councillors and their MPs so you get a better sense of what do we have to do to be able to get the agencies to do certain things and why it is their responsibility to get some things executed and that your role as the MP or the councillor is really to make representation. You will never get the money. It will never come to you to be able to just go out there and do certain things. Somebody is asking and this is not related to you but where is the St. Thomas Road? We're spending how much billion and spending how much billion <laughs> <to do this? laughs> we're, oh, doing, we're doing the largest investment in, in St. Coast. Thomas since history. Yes. The road from, is it Harborview? Well, it runs from Harborview right at the roundabout. If you're going to Norman Manley Airport, you would know that roundabout because it goes to the airport. It runs all the way from Harborview and it goes straight through to Yellows, all the way to Portland, actually. Right. So think about the southern end of the island. That road is now a massive highway. It will allow in many spaces for four-lane traffic. Um, it is reconfigured going over hills where you would have had no space to be able to expand in the way that we would like to. And you are seeing a lot of recent pictures, Prime Minister toured recently, massive parts of the road. It is looking very, very good. And it is going to bring significant development to St. Thomas and into Portland. But additionally, not only that, but we're actually building a new town in St. Thomas, mm -hmm. a brand mm -hmm. new town. So, so Mrs. Owens, we don't want to let the time run out because mm -hmm. I know people are mm -hmm. calling about many other things mm -hmm. that we have to respond. Um, you were saying something, Nadine? Um, messages. Oh, we have another message. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, it's, Mrs. Owens, I tell you, you're, you're very popular, I know. Good morning, MP. I think distribution of vouchers needs to be explained because many people ask why it's just a little bit of voucher them get slick media and and i also saw this comment on tiktok as well so like a five thousand i can't buy <laughs> but mrs honest i want to start because i'm an mp last year i paid school fees assisted with paying a school fees through the cdf to over 200 students 
I give out approximately vouchers to approximately 400 students. You know, when I did the calculations through the CDF, I was able to help about 700 students with either book vouchers, uniform vouchers, back to school assistance, general tuition grants, and tertiary grants. So while to some persons, a little $5,000 is nothing, to a lot of families who need one extra book, the little maths book we don't have, every make a muck, you know. Well, you are able to do better than me. So in my constituency, they will tell you that they would have been getting 2000 last year. I went to three. <laughs> and why, why that happens is this. And I explain it to my constituents. It is, it is something that is critical to bring your constituents into an understanding of the approach and hear from them if they are comfortable with that approach. If I give 5,000 to 100 persons and decide I'm going to give them a $5,000 voucher, that is $500,000 that is gone. Well, they get $5,000 each. When I spend, um, if my allocation for book vouchers is $4 million on average, that's about what I would do. And I give $3,000 vouchers, I am able to give 1,300 children a voucher. And they can buy it and they can use it to buy ruled exercise because a lot of kids we take it for granted in you know, Nadine that there are a lot of families out there who just the ability to go into a bookstore and buy five hardcover books and a pencil and some pencils and sharpeners that a lot of families cannot afford it the cdf is not for those who have it's for those who need right absolutely and and, and so a lot of persons have to appreciate that yes you may you may in a position where you can probably buy the book list and it's very difficult for you, but you can't afford it. There are persons who cannot even buy one book on that book list, Mrs. Solness. And that's the purpose of the CDF. The CDF is a, it's a kind of emergency it's assistance help. for persons who are the most vulnerable. And, and again, as I said, it depends on the constituency and rural seats have far more people who are genuinely in need. If you double the amount you give on a voucher, it means you have cut in half the number of people who will be able to benefit. So if you give instead of 5,000, you decide to go to 10,000 and last year you were able to help 400 children, now you will be able to only help 200 children and that is what it, it is. CDF is no matter what, limited and finite. But let's help you some more. Remember, you can write to the Ministry of Education. You do get help from the Ministry of Education with school fees and you balance yourself. If you're getting help with the school fee, then you use the money for your books. If you are able to get somebody to assist you and say, okay, I will do the bags and the uniform or whatever, then you use the money for the books. And still try to find out if there are rentals. And I remember I used to borrow books and I used to wrap my books when I got them so neatly that I could pass them on to a student coming up after me. So care our books and share them if possible, because very little changes in the curriculum from year to year. And we can pass on books in the way that we used to do in days of old. But CDF, no matter what, is very limited. Now, I thought the caller would have asked about who gets these vouchers. Because most times, that's a quarrel I hear. I have never seen a, a voucher. Most people tell you it's just the people who in the politics know it, and it's the people who are close who know it. And so, I do a system of ensuring everybody can come throughout the year and write down that they need help with book vouchers and we assess and see which families genuinely need it. There was a time gone by when people used to stop at the bookstore and sell the book vouchers and make sure it is so hard for you to sell it because you only get one. By the time you pay the fare and go downtown to sell the voucher, the money for the voucher finish. It is very important that those who genuinely need it are the ones who come and when you get it, do not waste it because there are persons who are genuinely in need and that one voucher means the world to them. So there are some questions and I don't want to manage this one because it's important that we address it. I see Tamar who says, unfortunately, it does not serve all those who need. If Mrs. Solness is being honest, she will know that not all her constituents benefit. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Solness, so let's say you are supposed to spend $8 million on back to school. How many students do you think in your constituency? 
I have I, 22 I, schools in mind. I have 16 schools. So, so each school have an average of about a thousand kids. And I'm going to cut it to 500. 500 kids. And then I have schools that students in my constituency go to outside, like Papine, that is not in so my you constituency. Get $8 million, like yeah, you spend $8 million mm -hmm. and you have um, so what 8, person students. So let's just divide it. Let's, just, let's, <laughs> say, let's just use 8,000. Yeah. Divide the 8,000 by the 8 million. How much is that? No, but you are you have 8,000 students. You are going to be able to give $1,000. So kids. if we give every student in Mississippi's constituency but we get a, a benefit from CDF, as, as the person who texted us said, each student would get a thousand dollars, dollars yeah. whether they needed it or not. And this is the point we're making. So the, the, the benefit cannot be given to everyone because there is no, there is no, the government does not have the ability or the government doesn't have the financial resources. Remember where we're coming from, we're coming from very difficult times. So a lot of the, so the little money that we get is to help the most vulnerable. So we will not be able to give anyone, everyone, but we try our best to give as many as possible. We're running out of time, Mrs. Holmes, but we have just one or two more questions. My name is Marsha from Maryland. Thanks a million for helping with the water. I used to have to go to the river to wash my clothes and bathe. I am telling you, it wasn't a good experience. I am forever grateful for the water in my pipeline. The pressure is so heavy, it often bursts up the pipe. But we don't care. We will fix it. Stacy and Knight. Um, and then there's another person with concerns we hope would we we hope river but mrs Ornes, i'm going to forward a lot of these numbers and these concerns you. to you it's been a very wonderful show we have we had a couple thousand people online watching us <laughs> we've had a lot of people love one one is where on the chart again um <laughs> nadine yeah number six on the chart so that's the sixth most popular station in jamaica a lot of people in jamaica watching us want to thank the people and on Love TV as well. We, we're also on Love TV. I want to thank the people on TikTok. I want to thank the people on Facebook, on YouTube. I want to thank the people on JS. So many people to thank. So many people watching us. I want to thank Mrs. Well, let me do it properly. The most honorable, Juliet Holness. ACCA. FCCA. ACCA. MSC, BSC. Oh my God. You know when I was growing up? I use none of it. My grandmother said, make sure in a group you have only for alphabet behind your name. You know, so it's always good for black people to have alphabet behind your name. But you have never seen anything behind my name. I've never seen you use it, which is a never. good thing. But I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank Mrs. Wallace. Any final words, Mrs. H? Oh, it is always a pleasure to serve. Um, coming up from a childhood, of working in the church and serving my community. It is actually very natural to be a member of parliament. You have to love people to be able to do this job. Genuinely love people. And I look forward to continuing to serve. For those in my constituency, I will encourage you. We have an office, reach out to the office when you have issues, but also be mindful that we are not able to do every single thing at the same time, at the same pace. Um, work with us as we work with you. Um, members of parliament right across the country have a very good understanding of their individual seat and what is required in terms of their CDF and they do keep their CDF consultation meetings. Continue to consult your constituents and find out if there are areas that they would want you to add to your focus coming from your CDF spend. Thank you very much, Mrs. Solness, and thanks to all our listeners. Thanks to the people online. Thanks to Nadine. Nadine, you're going to take us out with something nice and lovely and refreshing. Some refreshing <laughs> spiritual food to nourish us for the rest of the day. Until next week, we will be here at 11 o'clock on Love 101, the family station. Ask mm -hmm. the minister. Thank you all for listening. Nadine. Yes. Well, good morning, Minister. Mm -hmm. Why are mixing up my shows? A big sound of a big joke. Ja only Emmanuel, I woe. Ja giddy yon, I'm a giddy yan. The giddy yon, I'm a giddy yan.
The Gideon, I'm a Gideon well. Gideon go bustin' out of mad again. So much oppression, poor people face right now. Them crying out for freedom. Them crying out for free speech. Then said them want to stand up like them black liberators, like Malcolm X and Martin Luther and the ancient monarchy where compare of the ways. Free up black people from it, tear down them fence. Yeah. Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well, the Gideon go bustin' out the mat. I listen, I see, I, the power of the Trinity, give us the teaching of his majesty, and we no war, no devil philosophy. Not until the color of a man's skin is of no more significant well, to the color of his eye, remember all the war long in 1935. This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gorgon. Good, healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe, and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at 